Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Truth Wanted. I am your senior host of the program. Tr- uh, ob- I was about to call myself Truth Wanted. I'm objectively Dan. Excuse me. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's been a great minute. Fucking start. It's been a minute. Um, so I just uh, I moved into my new place. So I wasn't here last week. I'm in my new apartment here. Um, it doesn't actually look like this. This is the background from the 1970s uh, Willy Wonka movie. And uh, Rudy B, my guest for tonight, Rudy, has the um, new Willy Wonka background. So that's really cool. Um, but this is Truth Wanted. This is the live call-in show where we talk to people about what they believe and why. Live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and uh, we're here to talk to you guys. There's a number on the screen down there where you should come call and talk and chat with us. It's really, really fun. Every week I have a special guest. And this week is a really cool guest, uh, Rudy B. Rudy, you've been on the show before uh, a friend of mine and uh, re- recently uh, has been announced a new co-host of talk heathen another aca production so congratulations rudy thank you very much and uh let me just say i'm pleased to be back here because uh little known fact my first ever aca appearance was on this show way back when i was a brand new baby youtuber and now I have a green screen, so now there you, you go. <laughs> yeah, and I, I have a green screen too. I didn't have one when we first did all that, and now I'm—I guess I'm Gene Wilder, and you're Johnny Depp in this scenario. Mm. I don't know where the analogy actually starts and where it finishes. Outside of we both have movie backgrounds, but um, you're here a little we are. bit unhinged, and I have uh, a lot of ugly synthetic wigs. Oh. Okay, so there well, you go. That's the- that's our first hot takes for tonight. I'm sure there'll be more. So please tune in, come along for the ride. Uh, yeah, Truth Wanted live call-in show. We'll be taking your calls in a little bit here, um, but we we've got some fun fun little stuff uh, planned for you guys tonight. I'm very very excited. But first, I want to tell a story. Uh, here's a quick story time. Um, so I moved into my new place this weekend, right? And um, I had my parents help me out. And Rudy, the one of the most scarring, embarrassing things happened to me that I will probably remember until the day I die. Oh, no. um, we're putting stuff into the back of the U-Haul. And my father comes up to me and he hands me a packet of condoms that I forgot to hide um, from them <laughs> before they were helping me move stuff and said to me, uh, you probably want to hide this <laughs> and put it in my pocket. <laughs> And we did not acknowledge that fact, and we have not acknowledged it since. I, and um, <laughs> I am emotionally scarred, and I I just need to talk about it because oh, you're such a prude, such a prude. No, I don't care. It's the it's my dad, though, Rudy. That's yeah. the thing. But your dad clearly wasn't that phased because he saw it and saw the same and thought the same thing that you did, which was you should probably hide this. That y- yes. Um, we have never had, I never had like the birds of the bees conversation with my dad. Like we've just never gone there. And that was like just the first time that whole thing's been acknowledged. And, um, I'm just, I'm just now here to share my, my drama with the rest of the internet here. So, uh, um, you should call into uh sex sex on Thursday. Yeah, I really should. I really should. Um, cause I, I don't like, know what, what do I that. do. I've been scarred. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, I'm now, I got all the boxes and I got most of my stuff in now, which is great, except there's a pop filter for my mic somewhere, um, that I need to go, um, put in, but, uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, I, maybe I'll send more pictures later. I don't know. Um, but it's fun. I'm glad I'm here in my new place. And Pico is around here too. People have been asking about Pico cause I haven't been, um, filming in my apartment. Um, I meant to go grab him before the show started, but I don't know where he's at right now. So maybe he'll make an appearance. I know, uh, it's been a popular request to see, um, my dear boy, my, my young, my young ward. Um, that's my cat for those of you who, who aren't aware. Um, but anyway, um, uh, Rudy, what's up? How are you doing? What is up and how am I doing? Well, after hearing that story, I, uh, man, I don't know how to feel anymore. <laughs> uh, but well, no, I'm, that's I'm okay. Doing that's great. an appropriate response. I am doing great. Uh, I just went on like a mini vacation with my uh, fiance. We literally just like went like an hour to 20 minutes away from home just, just to get out of town. A nice, little. nice. What'd you do? But, uh, we went to the zoo, oh, which okay. was great. And okay. we went to a historic village, which 
I don't know if you've ever been to one of those. A historic village? Yes. Like an old-timey pioneer what, town type of thing. How do we define historic here? Because, like, history I was yesterday. I said old-timey. Old-timey. That's old-timey. What is that? <sighs> so this we talk about is, the pilgrims? It could be. I don't even fucking remember uh, okay. how. Like, I think it was... Eighteen uh, hundreds? I don't know, but there was there was at least part of the part of the thing that was like set in the nineteen twenties. We went in there, went to a pharmacy, and got some uh, ice cream, and that was pretty cool. Well, that's cool. I'm happy for you. Glad you got to go to some historic places. And learn it was about... honestly not that exciting, but uh, it was it was interesting. Well, <laughs> these days, you you make do with what you got. You know, I, I totally understand uh, making do with what you got because we're still in a pandemic, even though some people don't think that. And um, yeah, the amount of it's... people not wearing masks was not super encouraging. Yeah. Are you, you fully vaccinated now? I am. Yeah, me too. All right. Shout out to everybody who's vaccinated uh, out in the chat. Good job. That means that we can go meet up and spit in each other's drinks just that, like old times. That's what that's what the CDC actually specifically said. They actually recommended that. <laughs> Um, they said it builds character, um, <laughs> and I'm I, I'm looking forward to fulfilling the the obligations that the CDC has provided for us. But but Rudy, I have something special for today. We we got something a little, a little cooked up, a little, a little something different for today's show. And and based on um, audience reactions, we'll see what we do with this um, as an ongoing segment. Um, I want to call this thing tonight. We're calling it Dan's Meme Corner. All right. Dan's meme corner, um, otherwise known as DMC, Dan's meme corner. And so I'm, I'm going to ask the crew to run DMC right now, if you could. There we go. So those of you who are listening at home who can't see us, we have a meme currently on the screen. And we are going to examine this meme. I saw this meme on Reddit um, just today, actually. Um, I can't even remember where it was, but this meme says atheist, average atheist starter pack. Um, and you, you've seen these starter pack memes before, right? It's yeah. like <clears throat> classic, makes, classic. Somebody, somebody's trying to like stereotype a, a group of people or, or an experience, and like they, they bring a bunch of common elements and put it into like one picture. Well, and, I will uh, say this the, the, the use of the word stereotype makes it sound like it's always negative, which it isn't. There's, it isn't. there's not always a negative connotation involved. Yeah, but. it's like like a family vacation starter pack or something, or like um, first day of school starter pack or something. You know, it's just kind mm -hmm. of like capturing sort of a zeitgeist of uh, of a moment or or maybe on a fan base sometimes and this one's talking about atheists so i want to look at it again on the screen here real quick I, like so there's a couple things here and i want to see how we feel about this i gotta pull it up on my end too um and it's just talking about like um you know because like the atheist movement online has a reputation Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. It's like it's it's changed in the public eye and also like in online communities eyes. If you identified as an atheist, there was like certain things that were like attributed to that. You were like a neckbeard type. You had like a like a fedora or a trilby, you know, if you want to get technical. Yeah. And then like, uh, you know, there was and, and you predominantly like white dudes, you know, like it, it was like a whole thing. But this one's kind of like examining that in like 2021. It's kind of interesting. The first one on the top left says, does it make atheism a defining factor of their personality? Which, okay, yeah, that's good. That's I would, positive. I would say that's certainly positive. I don't know if it applies to all the atheists that I know. Does but... it apply to us? This is what I was thinking, Rudy, because like we do a lot of activism. Yeah, we've <laughs> kind our... of made a, a thing out of it. But is I don't it our know personality? If... I don't know if it affects my everyday life exactly, although I will say I have become more attuned to religious things, but I also live in a small, predominantly white, predominantly Christian town, yeah. so it's kind of hard not to notice well, here's because another one. it's everywhere. Yeah, here's another one, too, because it says, has mates, I'm, you know, they mean friends, has mates of a variety of different faiths, which is interesting. I'd say I have more friends now of a variety of faiths than I did as a Christian. Oh, certainly. I was right. pretty much exclusively friends with Jehovah's Witnesses when I was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I... Now I have friends that I have to, if I'm talking about one of my friends to one of my other friends, I have to stop and explain what the hell their faith is. I'm like, oh, yeah, one of my friends is like a pagan. And they're like, what? I'm mm. like, you know, like 
you don't know what paganism is? And they're like, no. I'm like, I, why doesn't everybody know what pagan means? Like, yeah. oh, I don't have to, I don't want to explain somebody else. And then I have to be more specific. And I'm like, well, I have this one friend who's like Celtic pagan. And then I have another one who's like Norse pagan. Right. And, and it's like, no, this is, this is too complicated. It's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and what I explained to, like, if, if you would have told me, uh, like uh, ten years ago, hey, you're you're gonna know a bunch of people online. You're gonna be friends with like Canadian moms and also like um cool pagans and um Christians of every kind of sort and stripe of 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 theologies you've never even heard of. I I don't know what I would think because that would be very different from my previously lived experience. But it's cool that I know those people now. But I, I want to keep looking at this because this this has a lot to it mm -hmm. here. It's kind of meaty. So this is another one. It says cringes at all the dumb shit they said as a 14 year old edge lord so this one doesn't apply to me because i didn't i didn't uh become an atheist till you know my early 20s so i don't know i mean i, I do cringe at the things i said as a 14 year old that's true that's i think that's I was universal. a 14 year old evangelist yeah yeah i think that's <laughs> universal you gotta cringe at whatever you do at 14. there's nothing that you do that's good at 14. no right he, universally no. speaking i mean i think that's just everybody so I, don't know I mean, Greta, one. Greta, what's her face is probably going to be okay with the stuff she Greta did. Greta Thunberg, me. yeah, um, she's she might be the be. only one. <laughs> she she, she might, might be, be the, the least one. cringe fourteen-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll see. She's still got time. I don't know if she's fourteen. I don't know how old she is anymore. I have no but, idea. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at the next one here. It says, uh, "Threw out that flying spaghetti monster T-shirt years ago." Okay, this is gonna. This is. This is direct to some people. I, there's still people at the ACA that have their flying spaghetti monster t-shirts. I've never had any flying yeah, I feel like spaghetti monster. We're calling monster. people out now. Well, we have one. We have a flying spaghetti monster in the regular studio. It's right there. Yeah. Like I, it's been on my on these productions. So I feel like I it's a know. little different because it's an atheist show as opposed to yeah, just being true. a person going around okay. and being like flying spaghetti. Monster. Yeah, that's fair. It's more themed to the to the event, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. makes more sense. Okay, that makes me feel better. We're justifying it. our cringe. We're, We're just yeah, I mean, is it, I mean, <laughs> that's the question though. Is it cringe? I mean, like do people like unironically get something out of the flying spaghetti monster or is it just like the troll people now? Oh, it is basic. I mean, I've never seen anybody be like yeah. unironically into it. But yeah. sometimes when I'm when I'm just like you know, sometimes if I'm just like uh Gesundheit and someone's like, oh no, the, the, the flying spaghetti monster blesses you with his doodly appendages or whatever, I'm like, mm, yeah, I get yeah. what you're going for. It wasn't Here, that funny. <laughs> here's one. Can't really risk being outspoken about it anyway due to the circumstances of their family slash country slash culture. So that applies to all like probably most people watching the show right i mean like that's like all of us in some way or another i mean here we are at, like literally talking on like a, a platform for it yeah. but like uh in my in your day-to-day -day life a little less yeah i remember this conversation that i overheard at work slash was kind of slightly like peripherally a part of the conversation but i wasn't like in the middle of it they were talking about how like uh you know, uh, when people talk about how Christians are homophobic, they think all Christians are homophobic and it makes them look bad. And like, without missing a beat, I just turned and looked at them and was like, I was homeless at 19 because of homophobic Christians. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, that's a real thing. If you don't want to own it, that's that's cool, I guess. Here, here's the thing, right? <laughs> like, here's something I've, I've come to realize is that if you can be apathetic about religious issues, you are privileged. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hot That's takes, my hot, hot take. Takes, Here's hot my hot takes. take. And this is why I think this, because like <laughs> for you and me, more, you more especially so, like that was life. Like religion was a part of daily life. Mm -hmm. And so like to separate yourself from that is not only a shift in your personal identity, but also in the way that you relate to others in your family and your friends and or don't I mean, relate now. Yeah, or don't relate. And, and and in some ways it's a part of your your culture. As, you, as you've grown up, you know, like I definitely had, was part of a Christian culture for sure. And that I've had to like navigate leaving since then. So like, that's a big deal for me. If you grew up in a secular country where religion was never a big deal in the first place, I can see yeah. why talking out about it might seem cringe and be like, oh, why, why are you even bothering with these people? Because like, because we're being bothered. I mean, there's like, there is legislation right now trying to be passed in the state of Texas um, to ban abortion after six weeks. And what is the reasoning for that? It's like pretty much purely religious like there's you know that's affecting the lives of people here and like i i want to speak out and talk about that so 
you know, I, I, t I will try to speak out when I can. Um, you know, I don't talk about it every single day. Um, but like I do talk about it a lot. I'll bring it up with friends and even coworkers sometimes if it's relevant. So I don't know yeah. if that one applies to me as much. I do kind of speak out about it. So I don't know. But we also have this giant online platform. There is where, that. So yeah, there is that. I mean, yeah. like we we, we are we're kind of we got some skin in the game there in terms of like uh you know oh, we we should pay attention the meme says average atheist starter pack we are that's not true. your average atheist are we ultra baby. atheists are we like <laughs> we're uber inner atheists circle. Inner, we're circle inner circle atheists yeah i guess so i guess you're right let's see we um, are the lizard people at the top of the food chain baby that's right that yeah i'll agree with that uh <laughs> leave the next one here it says pretty much forgets they're an atheist until the subject is brought up in conversation so it's more for me it's more like i forget that everybody else doesn't have the same sort of understanding of re of religion from a more secular viewpoint until it yeah. comes up and people are like and i'm like oh shit like when you say you'll pray for me you literally think that that's the best that you can do for my situation yeah uh, there, like there are <laughs> yeah yeah there are some things where it's like for me like that i consider to be basic facts that not everybody accepts like evolution like even when i was a christian i still believe in evolution so it's like I, I always get surprised when it's like oh yeah like there's a lot of people that don't actually think that's a thing it's like oh yeah young earth creationists Wild. yeah yeah um you see a lot more of those in texas i think than in other parts of the united states probably but um, well, I don't know. I'm in Ohio, and uh... no, I mean you definitely see it too. I'm not saying you don't. I'm saying it's probably more to my experience than maybe somebody in like I don't know Canada or like you know somewhere in Europe. Like it's just kind of more of an American phenomenon, I guess. But um, unfortunately, uh, here's another one. Uh, doesn't really give a shit anymore. Tbh, and then has like the Big Lebowski saying, "Yeah, well, you know, that's just like your opinion, man." So I we don't qualify. <laughs> No, <laughs> right? we don't qualify. But I understand why other people. I I, I get yeah. it. If I wasn't an activist, I really wouldn't give a shit. It yeah. would mostly just be like, well, cool that you think so. And I've known plenty of atheists like this. And it's like, you know, it's great that you weren't so negatively affected by religion right. that you feel like you need to like become an activist about it. That's great. I'm glad that you can be met about it. Wish I could yeah. be met about it. <laughs> it is hard to imagine me um doing this show in particular if i didn't have my own personal experiences you know um and that that definitely plays a part in why i do the stuff that i do um obviously i like to think that everything i do is like you know philosophically sound and like you know has some sort of um i don't know weight to it outside of just well i just really don't like this thing um and uh, i i still think that's true obviously but like you know we can't help but ignore like the reason why we do talk about it is because people are negatively affected by this right. so it's worth talking about right we're not going to act like we don't have an axe to grind we just feel like we're very justified in grinding that yeah, axe. pretty much yeah that's <laughs> that's how i feel that too yeah like definitely and and that should be okay i think i i, I think if people are aggrieved by something they have a right to talk about that aggrievement and so yeah absolutely yeah. Um, let's see. We're almost through this meme here. Embarrass the demographic is represented by patronizing incel neckbeards. Hmm. Actively trying to change that. Actively yeah. trying to change that. Yeah. Like you definitely don't fit any of those categories. I can't even really grow a beard too well. So I you couldn't be a neckbeard if you tried. Or an incel. You're too hot to be an incel. You're a Chad. Sorry. Hey. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, no comment. But like, look, I'll, I'll say this. The If you look at the people who represent the community, at least in the circles that we run across these days versus what it was like 10, 20 years ago, I've, I've said this a million times. Like, it's definitely different. Like, the landscape has changed. It's continuing to change for people who represent you know what we're doing so i i appreciate that much yeah like i i'd say that um i'm not embarrassed by it because there's not as many people like that anymore there definitely yeah, there they definitely in, was a thing but like they're in the minority now you know the people who are kind of like misogynistic and gross and annoying and like eh, actually like those people are diminishing in number that's true but then also like it may be a bias of ours because we're in a certain kind of space because like that's this, true because I, I don't look at like r slash atheism you know, like, I don't know what goes on there. I don't know what goes on on, like, other forums yeah, and stuff. Fair. I just, I look at, like, Twitter and, like, um, obviously, 
all the media related to this show and the other shows. So I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. maybe and we are, we're speaking from a platform. So the people who are finding us are people who are already we, somewhat like us. Otherwise yeah. they wouldn't be interacting. We also do have a vested interest. We don't want to be incel neckbeard types. So, you know, that's something too. Um, but anyway, let's look here a couple more. Doesn't treat religious people like shit purely because of their beliefs. Well, I don't, I don't think we've ever That's really. A big one. Uh, you know what though? I, I mean, I I do see that still though. I do oh see yeah, that. It, it, but I I I feel like we both actively combat that pretty much any time we see it. Yeah, like I will tell people, like I I you know some people are like all religions are cults. They're just made to control the sheeple and blah blah blah. And I'm like, have yeah. you ever been in a religion? Like, have I, you ever been a religious person? Because that's right. really not how it works. Like, in your day-to-day -day life, I was in an actual cult that did control my whole life. Sure. And that wasn't, that really wasn't the whole point of it. Yeah, like, depending on how important religion is to you, how it ideologically affects you is going to vary. Obviously, like, not every Christian thinks the same way. So it's going to be, you know, effective for people on different levels. But like, at the end of the day, I do think if you follow the logical extent of what a lot of religions teach, like it does end up being harmful for the people who practice it and also the people who don't, you know, um, I think there's a lot of evidence for that. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think I treat people like shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. Um, let's see. Last one on here is uh, getting <laughs> kind of kind of getting sick of this guy. That shows a picture of Richard Dawkins. So, um, kind of is an understatement. Yeah. Like, it's just the boomer mentality. I mean, I've even seen Christians like share like articles that are bashing him for whatever reason. And it's like, yeah, he's just so full of bad takes. He pisses off literally everybody. Well, now. here's what's weird because, <laughs> okay. So his whole comments on Twitter and stuff blew up in the mainstream. Right. And people were calling him like, Oh, super atheist, you know, Richard Dawkins, like a atheist scientist, Richard Dawkins. Like that was his headline. Yeah. Right. And, and to be fair, like he, he's written a lot about the subject, right? Like he was, um, a, a, I don't want to say representative, but like he was a known person in the movement. You like, he, I mean, mm -hmm. he was he was a figurehead to yeah. some people. He really and, was. And, and the problem is that I think that like religious people see Richard Dawkins and they're like, that's like atheist pope, right? And we're like, yeah. no, yeah, he has some good ideas about evolution, and that's literally all we ask the guy for. That's, I mean, that's it. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a personal thing too, because I guess what Dawkins means to other people is going to be different. Like, like he never really meant much to me in my kind of journey. Um, yeah. because like, Same. like I said, I never, I always, evolution was like that. You didn't have to convince me on that. And he talks a lot about yeah. that. So his work on that never really, uh, but, you know, what, what, what I most remember him for is seeing lots of clips on YouTube and stuff of him doing the debates and like doing, um, you know, just, uh, getting some one liner of him just saying some, mean shit about religion or something i don't know but like and, and but he is he has not been relevant to my activism really um in any meaningful sense and i don't think he's yeah. really active meaningful to most of the people that we come in contact with so i, I guess yeah. that part's true you know like i, I hear I a lot more apologists citing him as a uh sort of as a figurehead and an authority in the in atheist circles than i do any atheists so yeah like that's the 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 good and bad thing about doing the things that we do is because we can decide who we want to associate with but at the same time we it's harder for us to like distance ourselves with people because they see oh those people hey, he's an atheist you're an atheist you must think similar things and it's like mm -hmm. well we're i mean i'd like to think that we're like independently minded on a lot of separate yeah. issues but and in, in exactly know. the same way that I had that conversation with my coworkers who are like, I, I don't like that Christians have a reputation as being homophobic. It's like, then do something about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like that's, a, I mean, that's the thing too. Like um, I'd say our, our community talks a lot about LGBT rights that didn't really happen in Dawkins heyday, you know, um, like it just wasn't really an issue that was, talked about as much i i don't know maybe he did talk about it in some interviews and stuff that i haven't seen but i, I don't remember that being um a sticking point for me you know um mm -hmm. but anyway that that's the whole meme 
thank you uh thank you crew for um working with us for dan's meme corner as we look at memes i don't know if we want to do like a meme uh, with so many words next time i don't know maybe but, yeah that but, was a pretty wordy meme to start with it's but... a wordy meme but it's interesting i wanted to yeah. talk about it because like does this apply to me and does this apply to the people watching um i don't I know but it's burned some good conversation i think so too so guys if you like the dan's meme corner please comment on, and and tell us um what you want to see next and um i'm gonna do this right now and we'll see if i regret it but you can dm me on twitter at objectively dan with your dank uh dank memes and uh, he'll definitely uh text the best ones to me <laughs> probably <laughs> we'll look at i want to look at dank christian memes dank atheist memes dank conspiracy memes send them to me there and we'll see if we want to make this a continuing segment here uh, for Dan's beam corner. Um, but um, that was fun. I'm glad we did that today. Um, are you ready to get to some calls, Verdi? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, we should get to some calls. But before I do that, I need to give a huge shout out to the patrons of the well, patron of the week. We just shout out one patron uh, each week. Uh, the folks that donate on patreon.com slash truth wanted. You guys help make this show happen every week. Uh, myself, Rudy, and most of the people that uh, do this show, we're all volunteers that make this thing happen. So all the donations go uh, help getting equipment and um, other cool stuff uh, that make stuff happen. So I want to give a shout out to this week's patron who is got to be on the screen it's don nelson don nelson thank you so much for donating on patreon and if you want to donate again patreon.com slash truth wanted i'll give you a shout out on the show i appreciate everybody who donates thank you guys so much it means a lot um and now i think it's time to get to some calls